Hello everyone, my name is Arun and welcome to my channel. This series is the tutorials on C programming and in this tutorial we will be looking at the while loops that are available in C. While loop is actually a looping statement available in C programming language that helps us to repeat a certain operation, repeat a certain set of operations again and again till a particular condition is reached. Okay, or else you can make a part, make uh, do some certain operations till a particular condition is violated. Okay, now to ex uh, to do this, uh, explain this while loop. I'm going to take a program. I'm going to take an example to generate. Okay, a collage conjecture. Let me explain what it is. You see, uh, ju just to take take it as a thought experiment. So let's say you imagine a positive uh, a positive integer. Okay, let's say twenty five. And here's the thing. If the number is odd, let's say, the number is odd, let's say, in as per this conjecture sequence, the next number will be obtained by multiplying the odd number by 3 and then adding adding 1 to it. So 25 multiplied by 3 is 75 and plus 1 is 76. Okay, and now you have an even number and what do you do? Suppose if it's an even number, the sequence, the next term of the sequence is generated by dividing the number by 2. So the next number is 38. Okay. And after 38, uh, since this is even again, the next number is gen it's, it's even again, so the next number is generated by dividing by, by 2. And now if you look at this, 19, 19 is actually an odd number, so you multiply by 3 and add 1 to it, so which is 58, okay. And since this is even, you add you divide by half, so it's, I mean, um, it, it, you divide by 2 and you get 29. And then now what you do is uh, you proceed so on and so on and so on. Okay, you proceed so on and so on and so on till you reach one. Okay, repeat the series recursively till the number reaches one. And this sequence of numbers you get over here, this is actually the collapse conjecture sequence for a given for a given number for a given number. And this sequence is actually the collapse conjecture sequence for the number twenty-five. Uh, if you want to know more about it, you can read this in the read this in the Wikipedia article over here. Collage conjecture is also called as a 3n plus 1 conjecture or sometimes called as Ulam conjecture or Kakutani pro Kakutani's problem. The major idea is take a positive number n and if the number is even divide by 2 to get divide by 2 um, okay where the number is odd multiply that number by 3 and add 1 to it and then repeat the processes okay repeat uh, repeat the process either divide by 2 or multiply by 3 and apply add 1 depending on the oddity of the number and proceed indefinitely um, proceed indefinitely the conjecture what the conjecture is actually stating here is that no matter what number you start with you will eventually reach one okay and this is one of those unsolved mathematical problems and the problems that are available uh, that are that are present in the mathematics okay nobody's able to get a proof for it okay we're not going to go inside and try to look for a proof of it okay we're just going to you know generate the sequence okay uh, but if you're some uh, a mathematician over there uh, who has who likes to be an aspiring mathematician who wants to, wants to you know play around with it well that's conjecture could be like interesting thing to do and uh, to work with anyway let's start our program uh, so we'll the what did the program that we're going to write is such that you will take an input number and then uh, we just have to we just have to use some kind of a statement to make sure that uh, the number if the number is even we have to divide that you know if the number is even you have to divide by two and proceed further and if the number is odd you have to multiply the number by three and add one and proceed further so we have to generate a sequence like this okay now let's start with the program so hash include stdio dot h okay this actually for this program this uh, stdio dot h include will more than be sufficient and then let's start our main program let's start our brackets and then I just put return 0 at the end okay and now since this number is actually a positive number I I need a positive number to start with so I'm just going to create a positive integers and what do we know what and we need a way we need variables to store positive integers and a corresponding data type so the one we have is unsigned um, yeah, that's better. Okay, that's better. Unsigned int. So we're going to get create unsigned integers. Let's say num will be the number and o num. I'm going to create another variable called as o num or o underscore num, which will store the original number. And we're going to create a new variable called as count. 
and we'll set that to be initialize that to be zero. This uh, number, this variable will store the will calculate the sequence and it will going to run again and again and again. Whereas this this will be the original number to start with, and whereas this one will give us the count of what the iteration is. Okay, and now let's ask the user for input. Uh, user input. So let's put a print statement stating the user what to do. Enter a positive integer. Okay, and then colon, and then we use scanf to get the number. And since this is an unsigned integer, we need to use percentage u, and then we pass the address of the variable o underscore num. Okay, so we got that, and now what we're going to do? We're just going to print one line. Print initially what happened? What is the number? Okay, iteration. Iteration percentage u, and I give a tab, okay, and then I type number equals percentage u, and then I have to put this in a new line, so I'm just going to put backslash n, okay, and now if this is going to put iteration zero, iteration one like that, so that will, so we have to put the value of count over here, so we I put count over here, and then in here number you said percentage u, so the number has to come over here, the number is actually our uh, onum okay before that what i'm going to do i'm just going to uh, initialize the sequence initialize sequence and that is actually num will be equal to onum because this num is going to vary uh, you know, repeatedly okay repeatedly so we're going to initialize this and here we can use num as it is okay and now, now this is now here. From here on, we are going to write our while loop, and this is the most important part. The while loop, what it has to do is you just add two. Uh, the syntax for while loop is like this. You write the keyword while, okay, and a condition that has to be satisfied, okay. So it's like this, condition, okay, and then you have to uh, and then and then you have to write uh, statements to execute if condition is true if condition is true and one breaking statement uh, one uh, one and one condition uh, breaking statement set what I mean by what I mean by that what I mean by this is that you write a you write the while loop and you write a condition and if this condition is satisfied you write all the statements that has to be executed uh, repeatedly after uh, repeatedly uh, when this condition is satisfied here and in these con in these conditions okay in these statements you write i mean you just have to make sure that uh, you do something so that this alt condition terminates in a in a, in a finite number of sequence otherwise this kind of this loop will go on for infinite go on indefinitely so this is actually the syntax for while loop. So I'm just going to comment this out. Okay, format uh, comment lines. So this is our syntax for while loop. Okay, so this is it. You write the keyword while and put a condition and write a loop indicate write a write in within curly brackets. Include the statements that you have to execute as long as the condition is true, and make sure you have a condition breaking statement set. Uh, I mean, uh, that is a few statements that will eventually b break the condition in the repeated uh, repeated operations, or at least one statement that will break accordingly. So here, what's the condition we want to check? We just want to check. We just want to uh, close this iteration when the number or break this iteration uh, break this loop when the number is equal to it becomes one. Okay, and now. We just have to now inside this loop we have to look for the conditions. If if suppose a number, okay, the number if the number is even, you have to divide. If the number is even, we have to divide by two. Okay, okay. Sorry, if the number is odd, we have to multiply by three and uh, add one to it. So how do we do that? We just do we uh, if the number is divide. Uh, I mean, if the modulus division of the number by two, if that is greater than one, greater than one, let's say. Or greater than zero, greater than zero, let's say, then that number is actually even. Sorry, odd. So this uh, 
for this is this is the condition for odd numbers so if i take the if i divide a number by 2 and i'll get the remainder out of it then if the remainder is greater than 0 if it's it's odd number so it's going to do that and then and the new number in the sequence will become the old number times now the original number i mean 3 times the original number plus 1 okay else the only possible way is that the number is even because we already restricted this number to be an integer a non signed integer so i'm going to divide this number okay uh, by 2 okay and i while i while i can legit legitimately write like this okay i'm going to write this as num slash equals 2 while i can legitimately write like this this is another uh, short hand notation that is used this is actually called as an ink this is actually called as like an assignment operation this is like an um, how would i put it uh successive division operation wherein uh this statement and writing this statement are exactly the same if you're taking a number and dividing that number by some other factor and assigning it back to the same number instead of writing num equals num divided by 2 you can just write this option over this uh, operator over here and do and and you, and put the number that has to be number you want to divide with you can write like this this is perfectly legit okay there is actually a term for it i'm just not i'm just a bit foggy about exactly how you say it so i'm just going to tell you all about this in some other video okay i'll have a special video on, i'll have a video see, a video on explaining what these terms terms are so you just keep in mind this is this means num equals num equal now this this statement is equal to num equals num divided by 2 okay and then what we are going to do we did did one iteration so we are going to count this and similarly i can write count equals count plus 1 legitimately i can write this statement legitimately and it will work perfectly fine and instead i'm going to use something similar to this plus equals 1 okay they are exact they are i mean the uh, the functioning is exactly the same you take a number and you want to add one to that number and save it to back to this back to its own one like this you take a number and add one to it and then save that result to back to itself or you just want to increment the part increment the number uh, to one okay or by some value you can just put plus equals number plus equals one and that will take care of it this is act the these operations are slightly faster than the counterparts over here okay so people in general prefer to use this okay although not a big it may not cause a big difference but this this is actually a little bit prefer okay and now what do you do we just have to print out in the i mean what i'm going to do i'm just going to copy this line and paste it over here okay and this will just print out a new number now let me explain what's happening in this while loop the while loop will check if the number is greater than 1 if the number is greater than 1 okay during the first during the first uh, execution of the statements okay it will check if the number is greater than 1 it will check if the number uh, number is odd if the number is odd the number will be multiplied by 3 and it will be added by 1 okay and that will become a new number for the sequence else if the number is even we are just we are going to divide the number by 2 and that will become the new number for the sequence and it's going to increase the count parameter by one count variable by one unit okay and we are going to print in the iteration number and iteration and uh, the number the uh, number in the sequence over here and then what will happen is that this entire loop in this entire all the set of statements are got executed once isn't it now what we have to do uh, now what will do is that this new number will be will, uh, this while loop will check this number again to see if it is greater than 1 okay if it is greater than 1 this all the statements will execute again okay and then you and then you get a new number and then that new number will be checked by this while loop to see if it, the condition is matching if the condition does matches this will execute again and then you repeat this again and again and again at one point because of this division of because of this division operation over here because of this statement okay there is a good chance that uh, for finite numbers I mean it is well observed for for this problem that for finite uh, finite numbers eventually because of this division this number will ultimately reach 1 ultimately reach 1 so that that will break this while loop and then that will break this while loop okay and thereby terminating this uh, state the loop this ex looping statement okay so we don't need any explicit statements over here to break this while loop and then what i'm going to do we just going to print up a post diagnostic uh, information printf like saying printf and the 
number percentage u uh, takes percentage u terms to converge to one and then an exclamation where is that yeah an exclamation and then a backslash n okay and then what i'm going to do i'm just going to write the original number um okay it didn't fill in anyway original number and then i'm going to put the count so it's going to read like the original number say 25 took uh, several, five, several iterations to come back to the or come back to uh, converge to what that's it and this program is officially ready now let's run this up to run this we can use this uh, shell script over here and proceed with it okay or you can just compile it on your own so it doesn't matter this is this is easier so i'm just going to come execute this and i get a warning and i get a warning it says print why is that Oh yeah, I. Oh yeah, I forgot the F F over here. And now, if I run this, do I get any problem? No, it doesn't. Now, what I'm going to do? I'm just going to um, check this out. We are lo looking at this example, right? So let's write um, 25 over here and see what happens. Enter a positive integer 25. Whoa! It took 23 terms. And let's look check the terms Initi in the initial iteration the initial term is 25 and then we got 76 38 19 58 29 and after this we would have got we, the number would have increased to 88 and then 44 22 11 and after 11 it got it shifted it got raised to i mean became 34 and so on and so forth ultimately what what happened is that it, it and in the 23rd iteration 23rd, 23rd iteration it, re it reached one so the result is the result is saying that the number 25 takes 23 terms to converge to one. Cool. And now let's do this for another operation. Um, oh sorry. Now let's do this for another op uh, number. Say, what do we look at? Let's say 27. Uh, do you th uh, now you can place your bets as to how many terms it will uh, fall. Now if I press enter, whoa. Number 27 took uh, 111 iterations to converge to 1. 111 iterations to converge to 1. So, there are, so and if I look at the results, this result is pretty remarkable. Look, the number of odd, odd terms that occurred over here are so many that the number, the initial number 27, it reached as, I mean, it, it went into triple digits and it also went into four digits, four digits, and uh, it uh, one, at one point in the program it reached as hi okay i think it, it would have been somewhere over here if you remember right this program would uh, reach as high as 9000 something yeah in I iteration 77 this number reached as a the sequence reached as high as 9232 before it starts drop it before it starts dropping down even under eventually reaching one so that's a fun that's a fun program now you can check this out with as many as numbers you want. Let's say you start with the number 2000. Obviously, but the number 2000, this conver uh, initially there is a rapid convergence and afterwards the convergence started going out. It shooted to high values and then it starts converging at one and it reached number 100 and iteration 100 and 112 iterations. It just reached one. Okay, so that's about it. So this is a good example uh, to uh, understand while loops and hope you all understood this. Okay, and ha have fun with running with this program. This is like a fun thing. You can just play around with it. Okay, and if you want to know more about this collapse conjecture, you can just read it up over here. And these results are pretty interesting. This is I mean, not related to programming per se, but this is like at least a, uh, it's like a curiosity bit, put for thought. Just have a look. <laughs> and th this is the example they were given over here for number 27 it took 111 steps 111 steps to reach re reach one and the, it, re it reached as high as 9232 and we got that over here and we got and we got that in our program and they have a lot of uh, research showing on the con 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 the iteration time the number of iterations taken for several numbers to reach one they all this is on over here and these are pretty interesting and let's see well you can just view this up and this is quite interesting
okay that's all i have for you all in this tutorial thank you all for watching and i'll see you all next time in another interesting video till then take care